To glue parts together you have a few options. One is cyanocrylate, or super glue as we call it in English, which will likely only have a few uses in modelling, mostly to attach metal parts to, well, anything else. It's expensive, it's messy, you can use it for plastic on plastic parts, but I, I wouldn't. Poly cement, what I use for the most part, and what I advise to use. Here I have a pot of Revel Contactor Professional. Though there are lots of different brands and types out there, this is, to my knowledge, the most universally known and used. And it does the job okay. It's pretty cheap and you can get a lot of use out of it. Plus, it, this particular pot has a special nozzle to make it easier to apply. I also have a pot of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which is also a kind of poly cement, but much thinner. I don't use this for general purpose, but instead use it for special circumstances, which I will show you shortly. You will only need one general purpose poly cement. Brand or type doesn't matter, but I do suggest one with a nozzle to make working with it easier. To stick pieces together, make sure both parts are clean. You don't need to spend too much time on this, just make sure there's no dirt or debris in the way. Apply a small amount of glue. I cannot emphasise enough how little you need. If you can see it on the part, you have enough glue. Too much will likely spill onto the detailed parts of the model, and poly cement works by melting the plastic so it fuses with the other part. This will ruin the detail. I actually did this with one of the seats, which I will show you how to air quotes fix later. It is important to leave the parts in a way that will allow them to dry in position. One seat was fine with just gravity holding them together, but one that is ruined also needed holding in place with some reverse action tweezers. Sometimes you may need masking tape, sometimes even clamps. The important thing is to not use something that will press too hard on the plastic. Then, you should ideally leave the part to dry for an hour or two, minimum. Fortunately, while it's drying, you can also give it slight adjustments if it needs it. Unfortunately, if you do that, a piece with poly cement on it absolutely will leave a smudge. So if it's on a surface you can see, it will need fixing, if you don't want a smudge. This is so apparent on clear plastic parts like canopies, you really have to be careful with those, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Another long fast forward here, during which we will see me using the reverse action tweezers to hold a seat in place which, with perhaps a tad too much glue, ruins it. Like always, I will stop at the next action of note. So this is a good opportunity to show you where the extra thin poly cement comes in. I use this to soften any issues I have with parts I've trimmed or glued together. Tiny hairline flakes I guess they'd be called plastic I have trimmed or I can't get a file in to trim. This glue, applied with the included brush, will soften these and stick them to the model whilst also slightly melting them to decrease their profile. Where two parts are glued together, applying it will also melt the plastic into these gaps, creating a smoother join that will either help remove recesses where parts are meant to be flush, or abridge gaps within recesses that are meant to be there. 
which while looking nicer also helps with painting later on. Of course this is not an exact science and may require further work to get it to look how you want. Generally speaking, this works most times. Of course it is at an extra cost, so it might be you just forego this step completely. It's not crucial, especially not for beginners. Now we are going to, air quotes, fix this part. As you can see, the glue has slightly ruined the detail. It may be that you don't care about this level of detail, as these details are reasonably hard to see, and that's fair. Typically, I would probably forfeit this process too, as I'm never going to notice this detail. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to, to a degree, fix it. Sometimes you can buy detail kits. That will increase the detail of a kit by a big margin. They typically have instructions similar to that of the ones we've been following that you can perform at certain times, like a sub-step. What I'm going to do is use household materials to replicate the original detail. Some people probably won't like this, as it's not strictly increasing the detail, just replacing the subjectively poor detail that was there before. Some people would argue that if you have to sand off the lacking detail, why go through the effort of replacing it if not to replace it with something better? Well, yeah, that's why. You don't have to. Plus, this may be a good step while learning to model. If you make a mistake, better here than on a super fine detail sheet, right? So, the process. Here I'm sanding off the ruined detail to completely make it flat. I then get both a relatively thick and thin conductor core from some spare wiring and the cyanacrylate. To apply the cyanacrylate, you can get application tips, which are almost like hypodermic needles that you can put on the tip of the glue to help apply the cyanocrylate like our bottle of polycement. I don't have those though, so instead what I do is pick one small corner of my cutting mat, which is off camera here, that I am begrudgingly willing to sacrifice. I put a drop of cyanocrylate on the mat and then use a pin to apply the glue to the part. I cut the wire to an appropriate length using appropriate cutters, then try my best to bend it to the shape of the previous detail, then apply it utilising some fine modelling tweezers to help ease the process. Then, I leave it for a short while to set. Well, that's it. I hope you've taken some little truth nuggets in this one, and I'll see you on the next one. Arrivederci, mi amiche.